Dear students, as you are all aware, the NEET examination was conducted on 12 September 2021. My congratulations to those who fared well and commiserations for those who did not. But always remember that tomorrow is a new day and we always keep on trying. We don't give up. That is the name of the game. Keeping the spirit in mind and putting it to action, we have compiled all the questions from NEET 21 and put together the solutions. This video is aimed at dissecting all the challenges NEET 21 sprang up for the students today so that they are better prepared for 2022. This will also provide a solid base for those who are attempting this challenge for the first time in NEET 20, 22. So without further ado, I am now going to present to you through analysis of NEET 21. And section A, question score is M3. You know, section A consists of 1 to 35 questions and first questions to number one it is taken it is taken from need 21 and in finite state conductor carries a current of 5 ampere as shown an electron is moving with a speed 10 to the power 5 meter per second parallel to the conductor the perpendicular distance between electron and conductor is 20 centimeter at an instant Calculate the magnitude of force experienced by the electron at that instant. So, mm, magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor, it is the current carrying conductor of current 5 ampere and it is sufficiently long. We can get the magnetic field at this point perpendicularly outward to the plane of board and electron is moving with velocity 10 to the power 5 meter per second so the magnetic force magnetic force magnetic force On the moving charge particle, it is actually Fm, B, E, V, sin 90 because angle between velocity and magnetic field, it is perpendicularly outward and uh, 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 electron moving along this direction. So, angle between V and B is 90. So, this is sin 90. Okay. And B equal to, it is mu 0 by 4 pi. 2i by r this is the magnitude of the magnetic field this is 2i by r for the infinite infinitely long state conductor or sufficiently long conductor and e is the charge of electron v is the velocity of electron and we know 10 to the power minus 7 mu 0 by 4 pi this is 2 into 5 20 centimeter charge of electron 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 and velocity of the particle is 10 to the power 5 meter per second finally it is 1.6 by 2 10 to the power minus 7 to 10 to the power 2 into 10 to the power 19 and it is 10 to the power 5 simply 1.6 by 2 if we add all the power minus 7 minus 7 2 plus 5 7 plus 7 minus 7 cancels each other and it is 10 to the power minus 19 okay if i 
do it is 16 by 2 so this become 10 to the power minus 20 and finally the answer is 8 into 10 to the power minus 20 newton and the correct option here is 4 simple problem you just do this calculation carefully next problem and dipole is placed in an electric field as per the diagram given this is the electric field this is the direction of electric field and it is non-uniform electric field and dipole is placed here dipole is placed it is plus q and it is minus q force on this charge that is force on the positive charge let us say it is f1 <coughs> and force on the negative charge let us say it is f2 since the electric field at this point electric field at this point electric field the strength of electric field is more at the point of charge plus q and electric field at the point where charge minus q is there the strength of electric field is less therefore we can say f1 is greater than f2 force on the positive charge rightward and the force on the negative charge leftward but the force force on the positive charge greater than the force on the negative charge since electric field is in non-uniform electric field so electric field at the point where positive charge lies is more and electric field where the negative charge lies is less so therefore the force on the positive charge is more and force on the negative charge is less along the direction of electric field force uh, direction of force on the positive charge it is always along the direction of electric field but the force on the negative charge always against the direction of electric field negative charge move against the direction of electric field positive charge move against the direction of uh, electric field but since these two charges are the dipole so total dipole finally move rightward total charge move rightward so towards left this is not correct towards left this is not correct okay so one and two already discarded first of all you have to find in which direction the total dipole moves since the force is a uh, force on the positive charge is greater than the uh, force on the negative charge so the total dipole will move rightward okay and along the direction of electric field you know this is very important conception along the direction of electric field potential potential decreases against the direction of electric field if we move against the direction of electric field potential increases if we if we move along the direction of electric field potential decreases so finally henceforth potential energy of the system decreases therefore the right option here is 2 potential energy will decrease okay so keep you uh, just you have to remember a, a very simple conception if we move along the direction of electric field potential decreases or if we move against the direction of electric field potential increases hence force the potential energy decreases if the potential uh, potential decreases so we can say potential energy also decreases okay next problem and conductor an inductor of inductance l and a capacitor of capacitance c and and a resistor and a resistor of resistance r are are connected in series to an AC of potential V potential across inductor given it is 40 volt potential across uh, capacitor it is given is 10 volt and potential across resistor it is given 40 volt 
that's what the diagram given in the problem okay first of all you know rms potential it is actually rms potential rms potential we can write v is equal to root over of v r square v l minus v c whole square v square potential difference across resistor given in this problem it is 40 square and potential across inductor it is 40 minus 10 square and finally it is 40 square plus 30 square so the rms potential in this series circuit lcr series circuit is 50 volt rms current we know rms current in this problem the amplitude of the amplitude of current flowing through lcr series is 10 root 2 ampere it is not the current of the circuit it is not the rms current of the circuit most of the student may uh, take this current as an uh, rms current but this is not the rms current there is an a huge chances here you can you can mistakenly take it uh, uh, this value as an rms current but this is not uh, you should keep uh, carefully read the questions the amplitude of the current amplitude of the current so rms current is equal to i naught by root 2 and it is phi it is given in the problem 10 root 2 by root 2 that is 10 ampere but we have to find out we have to find out here the impedance of the impedance of the circuit impedance of the circuit simply it is rms voltage by rms current rms voltage you know it is 50 and rms current it is 10 ampere so finally the impedance of this circuit is 5 ohm and right option here is 4 again it is 4 next problem for a plane electromagnetic wave propagating in x direction which of the following combination gives the correct possible direction for electric and magnetic field so direction the direction of em wave given it is is along x axis certainly the electric field and magnetic field mutually oscillating electric and magnetic field must be in the plane of j and k since the electromagnetic wave is propagating along x axis electric field and magnetic field must be vibrate must be vibrate mutually perpendicular into y z plane all the option given here j plus k j plus k minus j plus k minus j minus k j plus k minus j minus k j plus k minus k you know electric field and magnetic field electric field and magnetic field mutually oscillating you know electromagnetic wave consists of oscillating electric field and magnetic field mutually perpendicular to each other oscillating oscillating electric field is perpendicular to oscillating magnetic field so 
e dot b certainly it is zero since the both the field is perpendicular to each other if we take the e dot b then the dot product of the electric field and magnetic field will be zero here by error and trial method j dot j it is 1 k dot k 1 1 plus 1 means 2 so this is not zero minus j minus j if we take the dot product minus j plus k dot minus j minus k minus j dot minus j dot minus j it is actually 1 k dot minus k k dot minus k it is minus 1 so dot product of the direction of electric field and magnetic field becomes 0 it means electric field and magnetic field it's perpendicular to each other it is very important concept electromagnetic wave propagate perpendicularly to the plane of electric field and magnetic field oscillating electric field and magnetic field which are mutually perpendicular to each other that is electric field and magnetic field always oscillate perpendicularly each other in a plane therefore the direction of electric field and direction of magnetic field dot product of electric field and magnetic field should be zero and applying by simple conception or the very basic conception of electromagnetic wave we can get the answer here is 2 next problem a lens of large focal length and large aperture is best guided as an objective of an astronomical telescope large aperture contributes to the quality and visibility of image if the aperture aperture is more than the intensity of light total intensity of light will be more because amount of light entering into the lens will be more for the large aperture so one is the correct statement of this problem large area objective ensure better light gathering power obviously if the aperture is more than the you can get the more light so that will ensure the uh, better light gathering power two is also the correct statement of this problem a large aperture provides better resolutions okay you know resolutions is the um, uh, uh, limit of resolutions limit of resolutions limit of resolutions it is actually 1.22 lambda by a a is the aperture aperture or diameter of a circular circular slit and the resolving power it is 1 by reciprocal of limit of resolutions reciprocal of limit of resolutions so 1a by 1.22 lambda lambda is the wavelength so the aperture is more so resolving power of the telescope will be more and you know it is discussed in my theoretical class or when going through the resolutions of telescope resolution of telescope microscope so rp is the a by 1.22 lambda so large aperture provides better resolutions number three is also the correct statement of this problem so one two three all three are correct here since the one option is given all of the above are correct so we have to take the option four though one two three all are the correct but one two three are not the 
correct option here correct it is though it is the correct statement but not correct option because you know the option 4 given all of the above so simple questions just you have uh, uh, conception question based on the conception you just you have to um, keep the all these things you know uh, the uh, structure of the telescope uh, objective uh, ips objective has the larger focal length and larger aperture uh, then the ips in the case of telescope or in the case of microscope uh, uh, aperture and focal length the objective focal length of objective less than the focal length of the eyepiece and in the chapter resolutions in the chapter diffractions we can get the resolution of the optical instrument and limit of resolutions 1.2 to lambda by a 1.2 to lambda by a actually for the circular slit and dissolving power actually the reciprocal of limit of resolution so if the aperture is more then we can get the better resolving power or more resolving larger resolving power next problem it is column one column two have to match you know uh, questions taken from uh, current electricity and the very basic knowledge of the current electricity first of all drift velocity drift velocity drift velocity it is actually you know it is the mean velocity of electron a into tau tau is the relaxation tau is the relaxation duration that is the mean of the mean duration mean duration among the successive collision between the electrons when an electric field applied along conductor all the electron moves along the same direction and they will involve in the multiple collisions and we get the mean time gap between multiple collisions and this time is known as relaxation time so therefore vd is the drift velocity acceleration into time of relaxation and acceleration because of the electric field applied across the conductor it is e e by m into tau electric resistance so here a it is matches with r so just by just by a matches with r here it is all option given r r r so cannot be differentiated next electric resistivity electric resistivity from the macroscopic ohm's law electric field equal to sigma j current density is equal to sigma e e is the vector quantity j is the vector quantity sigma is the conductivity sigma is the conductivity electric conductivity and this is reciprocal of resistivity conductivity electric conductivity of the current carrying conductor and conductivity is the reciprocal of resistivity and this is the macroscopic ohm's law v is equal to i is equal to i is equal to v by r similarly j is equal to sigma e and we can write it is 1 by rho so rho is equal to electric field by current density simply a matches with r it is actually a and it is b a 
R a match with R and B matches with S. B S B S B S B P B Q. So three four are not the correct option. Three and four can be discarded by uh, just by checking A and B. Similarly, relaxation. Relaxation. Relaxation period. Relaxation period. Sometimes the students may not have the equation of the or cannot remember the equation of the relaxation period. So better to check the current density. Current density. If we check the current density. If we check the current density, this is current density J equal to actually I by A and you know it is a I means N E A B D by A and we can write it is N E V D N is the number density of electron is the charge of electron and V D is the dip velocity. Actually, current is equal to V D in a you can say current electric current through conductor. You can write this equation V D in a V D in a you can remember easily this equation current through conductor if the V D is the dip velocity of electron that driver is velocity due to the electric field applied across the conductor so V D E for charge N for number density and A for the cross sectional area current density is equal to current per unit area through the conductor and it is any V D we can write this so this is D and obviously Q is D and P obviously correct relaxation of time is C. So in this way if we, if we have to check C so C here P and C here Q similarly we can check D. D is Q and D is P. Among these four um, uh, matching columns, we uh, if you check only three, three physical quantities, then we can get the answer here. So right option here is one. If we check D versus P, D versus Q, here D versus Q. So right option here is one, and two is not the correct option here. So all this equation and finally relaxation period tau equal to we can write it is m n square rho actually this equation comes from resistance r equal to m by <coughs> ml resistance of a conductor in terms of the relaxation time we can write ml n square tau rho into a so from this equation the relaxation time is equal to m by n square rho next problem an electromagnetic wave of wavelength lambda is incident on a photosensitive surface of negligible work function in this problem work function given it is negligible so you have to take it as zero and the kinetic energy of photoelectron kinetic energy of photoelectron k equal to that will come from the energy of photon and it is ac by lambda so d broadly wavelength d broadly wavelength associated with the moving charge moving charge particle that is electron 
or that is photoelectron coming out from coming out of the surface of the photosensitive metal surface. De Broglie wavelength, if we take it is lambda d, it is actually h by p and it is h and there is in a certain bond between momentum and kinetic energy. We know this relation, it is simple 2mk and if we put here it is h by root over of 2 ac by lambda finally this becomes root over of h 2 mc root lambda squaring both side it is actually given lambda d square lambda d square lambda d square so if we squaring uh, if we square both side lambda d square equal to we can write h by 2 m c into lambda and finally lambda equal to 2 m c by h into lambda d square so be careful keeping the keeping special attention all the option during the calculation and lambda is equal to 2 mc by h lambda d square so 3 is the correct option here you have you just uh, carefully maintain uh, and keeping the keeping the eyes on the all option during the calculation you have to put the you have to choose the right option here very confusing all the option given more or, more or less same type same type of uh, uh, equation here so you may confuse to find out the answer be careful in this type of problem when given in this uh, when all the option given in this pattern okay and this is the problem taken from the photoelectric effect but we have to find out here give uh, ugly wavelength that is the uh, mix up of the uh, two chapters that is photoelectric effect and de Broglie, uh, de Broglie wavelength. Okay, next problem. A particle is released from height S. Particle is released from the a particle is released from the height S. Okay, and in a certain in a certain distance at a certain height its kinetic energy is three times the potential energy kinetic energy three times the potential energy kinetic energy kinetic energy three times the potential energy you know this is m we can write 2g y velocity of the particle after descending a distance y this is 3 m g h and finally this is g y equal to 3 h y is equal to 3 h s minus h is equal to 3 h and h is equal to s by 4 all the option given s by 4 s by 4 s by 4 s by 2 3 is not the right option here let us check the velocity 
velocity means you know v equal to root over of 2 g y so it is also not the correct option velocity should be in terms of root over of something you know 3 g s or 3 g s by 2 here it is root over of 2 g y equal to actually 3 h by 4 and finally this becomes sorry it is root over 2 g y equal to 3 s by 4 and this become root over of 3 s g by 2 the right option here is 2 4 is not the correct option here next problem The screw gauge gives following reading when used to measure the diameter the problem is taken from the instrument that is screw gauge and the reading you know uh, reading equal to main scale reading plus circular scale reading into pitch pitch is the linear displacement of the linear displacement of the circular scale because of one revolution many scale reading in given in this problem it is 0 mm and the circular scale reading is 52 division 52 division and pitch 1 mm per 100 division so 1 by 100 so for each pitch mother linear displacement linear displacement of the circular scale due to the full rotation that is for one division it is the linear linear displacement for one division linear displacement for one division is 1 by 100 1 mm is for the full rotation and the scale have 100 division and this is 0.52 mm since it is given in mm let us check the answer 0.52 centimeter is not the correct option it is also not the correct option 3 is also not the correct option so 0 0.052 centimeter is the right option here be careful about it you don't don't take the option here 0.52 centimeter because of the time pressure in the examination halls sometimes some students may take the option 0.52 centimeter but be careful it is mm okay so right option here is four next problem thick current carrying cable of radius r radius of this r <coughs> inside that is is the point b inside the conductor it is actually proportional to r but outside the conductor it is simple questions theoretical questions by applying the ampere circuiter law magnetic field inside the conductor is directly proportional to r and outside the conductor is inversely proportional to r eta this is less than r in the case of less than r or in the case of greater than r and this fact is uh, best represented or depicted by the graph this is not true this is also not true and this is also not true so three is the right option here simple questions next problem two chairs spherical conductor of radius r1 and r2 are connected by wire 
then the ratio of the surface charge density of the sphere sigma 1 by sigma 2 is 2 sphere 1 sphere of radius r1 it is connected by the wire since these two charge sphere are connected by the conducting wires so both the sphere having the common potential potential of the both sphere are common after the distribution of charge if two charge sphere if two charge sphere of different potential if it is connected by the conducting wire so they will attain a common potential so the two charge sphere connected by the conducting wire always remain at same potential okay so potential of this and potential of this are equal in this way we can say q1 by r1 q2 by r2 so simple the ratio of charge equal to r1 by r2 this is the ratio of the charge q2 okay and number two sigma 1 by sigma 2 charge 1 by charge 2 and it is a2 by a1 a2 is the surface area and a1 is the surface area of 1 and a2 is the surface area of 2 so charge per unit area and you know it is given already the ratio of the charge r1 by r2 and this is actually r2 by r1 that is whole square and finally it is r2 by r1 so simple with the two charge sphere are connected by the conducting wire so only the their potential will be uh, the potential will be same for that is they will attain the common potential under this common potential no charge will flow from this side to this side or this side to this side and it will remain under the uh, equilibrium condition okay if their potential are equal so simply that charge density is equal to inverse ratio of the uh, inverse ratio of their radius or similarly we can say inverse ratio of their capacitances so charge divides in two parts in direct ratio of capacitances and uh, just, uh, surface charge density is inversely uh, divides in two parts in inversely in inverse ratio of the capacitances under the common potential so this is very too important information or too important conception charge is directly proportional to their capacitances and surface charge density is inversely uh, inversely uh, to, uh, 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 ratio of the ratio of the surface charge density are in inverse ratio of uh, their radius of their capacitances also okay so here the correct option is two next problem The number of photons per second on average is emitted by source of monochromatic light wavelength 600 nanometer when it delivers power 3.3 10 to the power minus 3 what will be okay so the power power equal to number of photon emitted per second into energy of each photon is h nu okay so this is the power here it is very common problem n is the number of photon number of photon emissions from the light source per second so energy emission per second is the power so simply we can write n equal to p 
h nu and it is power by energy number of photon emission is equal to power by energy number of photon emission per second is equal to power by energy okay I have discussed this uh, type of problem and and the theoretical uh, discussion theoretical distances on this particular topic that is the number of electron emission per second from a uh, source of light having the particular power you know so power equal to p and it is actually ac by lambda so simply the number of photon emission it is equal to p lambda into ac if we put the values very sincerely here 3.3 10 to the power minus 3 and lambda 600 nanometer it means 10 to the power minus 9 meter okay and it is 6.6 .6, 10 to the power minus 34 and this is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter and it is 2 and this is 200 so 2 2 that is 100 so we just get the power you have to check the power 34 minus 34 minus 34 minus 34 8 plus 8 that is this becomes minus plus 26 into 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power minus 12 so 28 minus 12 28 minus 12 28 minus 12 it is 10, 10, 10 to the power 16 10 to the power 16 so 3 is the right option here 10 to the power 16 per second okay this is the number of photon coming from the electric uh, light source of power p of power 3.3 10 to the power minus 3 what so little bit calculative but you have to keep your mind cool uh, during this calculation okay and just you have to check the power of the 10 a cup of coffee cools from 9 90 degree centigrade 90 degrees centigrade 90 degrees centigrade to 80 degrees centigrade in t minutes when the room temperature is 20 degrees centigrade the time taken by a similar cup of coffee to cool from 80 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade at the room temperature 20 degrees centigrade so time taken from 90 to 80 degrees t and if we you know as part the uh, newton's cooling law if the time taken from 90 to 80 if it is t then the time taken from 80 to 70 let us say 80 to 70 so it will be more in the case of 80 to 70 the time taken to cools will, will be more from uh, from 90 to 80 degrees centigrade okay so all the option given here here it is it is it is not possible that time taken to cool from 80 to 60 it is less than the time taken t because as per the cooling law rate of change of cooling rate of change of cooling is proportional to theta minus theta naught theta naught is the temperature of surroundings if this gap is more than the rate of cooling is more if this gap is less then the rate of cooling is also less so in the case when time taken 90 to 80 degree centigrade if it is t so certainly 80 to 60 time taken is more so option 3 option 3 and 4 are not the correct option here be logical think uh, think this problem first of all better if you have to take this 50 50 uh, because 3 and 4 are not the correct option here here time is less than the t 
10 by 13 that will be less than t and it is 5 by 13 that is less than t but time taken as per the newton's law cooling's law if we apply the simple conception of the newton's cooling law uh, rate of cooling will be more if the uh, if the temperature difference between the uh, surroundings is more if the temperature difference is less then the rate of cooling is less so time taken for this case uh, in 80 to 60 degree centigrade will taken more uh, uh, rather than before so 3 and 4 are not the right option here 3 4 uh, so this is the 50 50 chances so 13 by 10 it is more it is greater than t and it is 13 by 5 it is greater than t i think here the option is 2 because temperature 80 to 60 degree and here 90 to 80 degree here decrease 10 degrees centigrade and here decrease 20 degrees centigrade so it will take more time so i think the option is two but uh, before uh, before final finally uh, finally the option i think the option is two but uh, let us check the what will be the calculation for this problem it is 90 minus 80 by t and k 80 plus 90 170 uh, that is 85 minus 20 and finally it is k into 65 okay the letter stanza 80 to 60 by t prime k we have to take the average 80 plus 60 that is 140 average of the 60 and 80 that is 70 so 70 minus 20 we can say it is k into 50 so t prime t prime by t t prime by t it is actually 20 by 10 into 65 by 50 and finally 13 by 5 as i earlier told you know the right option will be the 2 so calculation also gives this um, answer and then uh, it is the problem taken from the radiation chapter and uh, particularly from the Newton schooling law okay next problem very simple questions you have to find out the equivalent capacitance of the combination in the figure is very simple cost uh, very very simple questions a let us say the node node point is a and the node point is b since this node point short circuited by a wire it is b and it is b capacitance of this is c and capacitance of this is c these two capacitance connected in the common point b and other two uh, other sides of the two capacitances connected to the common point a a uh, simple very simple problem c and it is c b this is the short circuited so potential of this point potential of this point and potential of this point so all these three point having the same potential if we add in a if we uh, if we put a potential uh, uh, potential difference across this circuit so all three this point are kind of short circuited by wire so this point this point this kind of point can be merged at a single point so there is no gap between the point b if we if we merge all these points so you we don't get any gap between these two point b so c it's short circuited here so here actually uh, the two capacitance uh, C one side of this is connected to B another side of uh, other, other side of C is connected to A and parallel combination right option here is to C okay next problem 
effective resistance uh, again it is taken from the uh, uh, combination of resistance the previous problem was based on the uh, combination of capacitances but here the uh, effective we have to find out the effective resistance of parallel connection that consists of four wires of equal length equal area of cross section same material that is 0.25 ohm simply for the parallel combination it is very simple question we can you can solve this problem without pain also so resistance equal to 4 into 0.25 and it is 1 ohm and on the case of series combination it is 4 r and 4 into 1 it is the effective resistance so in all our resistance connected in series then the effective resistance of this combination is 4 ohm very simple questions here uh, four wires of equal length equal area of cross section same material that means uh, the resistance of the all wire are equal okay next problem find the value of angle emergence from the prism refractive index of glass root 3 so this is the problem based on the ray optics and particularly uh, uh, from the topic uh, prism refraction through the prism here this light incident upon the one side of the prism incident upon one side of the prism incident upon one side of the prism 90 degree that is angle of incidence angle of incidence 0 and this light directly fall on the others refracting surface if we draw a normal here if we draw a normal here if this angle is a that is the angle of incidence at the second refracting surface is r and here angle of emergence you have to find out here the angle of emergence angle of emergence it is actually e since you know r1 plus r2 equal to a and prism angle in this problem since it is 60 degree and it is 90 so this prism angle is 30 degree okay it is 30 degree and you know angle of incidence 0 so corresponding angle of refraction it is also 0 so i can say r2 equal to r i have taken in this problem it is actually a and the value of this is 30 degree so simple from Snell's law From Snell's law, we can write mu prism into sin r and mu air into sin e. E is the angle of emergence. The value of mu is given in this problem is root 3 sin r that is sin 30 it is 1 and it is sin e we can write this it is sin e equal to root 3 by 2 and finally the angle of emergence is 60 degree very basic questions just you have to check here the given in the problem angle of incidence zero so angle of refraction corresponding angle of refraction on that surface is also zero and uh, you know 
angle of incidence of the other refractive surface R2 equal to A, simply R equal to R equal to 30 degree and from the Snell's law it is very, becomes very simple and angle of emergence is 60 degree. Correct option here is 1. Okay. Next problem. Small block slides down on a smooth inclined plane starting from Starting from rest at time t0, Sn be the distance traveled by the block n minus 1 to n distance covered by the distance covered by the block n minus 1 second to n second. That is, it is the distance covered in n th second. From the very basic knowledge, we can say if the time interval taken from n minus 1 to n, then it is the distance covered by the particle or block, it is the distance covered by the particle or block. n minus 1 to n that is the distance covered by the particle in n th second because you know after n minus 1 second n th second starts and it will complete up to the n second so sn is the distance sn is the distance is n th second starting from 0 it is you know half a to n minus 1 okay similarly we have to find out here sn by sn plus 1 sn by sn plus 1 that is the distance covered in the next second s n plus 1 it is 0 plus half a 2 n plus 1 minus 1 and finally it is half a 2 n plus 1 and if we take the ratio very very simple questions you just you just you just have to interpret this problem properly then you can get the answers it is 2n minus 1 by 2n plus 1 and the right option here it is 2 next problem The escape velocity from the Earth's surface is V. The escape velocity from the surface of another planet having radius 4 times that of Earth and same mass density. Okay. So, escape velocity, it is also very simple questions. If the mass of the planet is fixed, that is you know i have told several times in my class it is a problem based on two types of problem particularly given in the gravitation mass control and density control if the mass of the planet is fixed then we can say escape velocity proportional to root over of 1 by r similarly V e root of her of 2 g mass of the planet is 4 by 3 pi r q rho by r and finally it is root of her of 8 by 3 
phi g rho to r here if rho is fixed that is density of the planets of if we compare the density of two planets density for the both the planets that is earth and other planet is same equal density here in this case be careful you know escape velocity is directly proportional to r okay so there are two type of problem particularly based in the gravitational chapter and uh, in the case of uh, capacitances also combination of the charge particle if we uh, or in the case of the viscosity that is the terminal is when a, any block any spherical block falls down through a viscous medium we finally it's at any terminal velocity in the case of terminal velocity we can we can apply the approach of mass density uh, mass control and density control okay so if the density is fixed we can say the escape velocity is proportional to directly r and you know this is the problem directly radius radius is four times so the answer is 4v so it is also the problem based on the conception if you have the idea about the mass control and density control so it, it, this problem the solution of this problem can be uh, solved without any pain next problem the half-life of a reactive nuclear is 100 hours. The fraction of the original activity that will divide after 150 hours. You know, <coughs> lambda decay constant dk constant it is ln 2 by t half so activity a equal to a naught e to the power lambda t a by a naught if we take a by a naught and it becomes minus lambda t and simply taking log natural both side just you should have the mathematical calculation you should have the knowledge about the mathematical calculation it is you know we can write it is lambda t and uh, it is lambda equal to ln 2 by t half into t minus and this is minus 150 by 100 given in the problem it is ln 2 and this is minus 3 by 2 ln 2 and Finally, we can write this, it is 1 by root over of 2 to the power cube. Okay. And finally, a by a naught that is the fraction of the activity after 150 hours it is actually becomes 1 by 2 to the power 3 half and this would be 2 root 2 and the correct option here is 1 little bit calculative but not difficult okay next problem in a potentiometer 
circuit a cell of emf 1.5 gives balance point at balance point at <coughs> I think it is 36 centimeter length of wire if another cell of emf 2.5 volt replace the first cell you know from the potentiometer we can measure uh, it is also the problem based on the basic equation of potentiometer it is the potential gradient l is the length of null point so E varies L EMF of the cell balanced is directly proportional to the length of the null point. Okay, so we can find the we can find the EMF of the cells. Not only that, we can compare the EMF of the cell by using different cell of different EMF and by the potentiometer we can also calculate the internal resistance of the cell it is l1 by l2 minus 1 l1 is the length of null point without external resistance across the cell and l2 is the length of balance point length of balance point when a external resistance connected across cell l2 is the null point okay so basically basically we can find the emf of the cell we can compare the emf of the cell or we can find out the internal resistance of the cell so this is very simple questions okay it is we have to find out the null point length we can write is l2 by l1 and L2 is equal to L2 by L1 and L2 is equal to L1 E2 by E1. L1 is the 36 given in the problem and it is 25 by 1.5 and uh, 36 into 5 by 3 and 60 centimeter right option matches with one so this is the problem based on the potentiometer and based on the instrument of the current electricity question number 21 water falls from a height of 60 meter at the rate 15 kg per second to operate the losses uh, due to frictional force are 10 percent of the input energy how much power is generated so in the case of uh, uh, in the case of turbine water falls on the blade of the turbine because of the uh, kinetic energy uh, kinetic energy of the uh, turbine blade um, uh, the energy uh, uh, electric energy generated here but due to the uh, frictional force 10 percent of the energy is lost here so therefore power we can say 10% of power that is 90% of energy converted into electric energy and the potential energy of water body is mgh but here m equal to given 50 15 kg per second so the amount of water per second uh, per second falling on the blade of termite is 15 kg per second so it is the mgh that is the energy per second energy per second is the power and 90 percent of power converts into the electric energy this is 90 by 100 15 10 and it is 60 meter so 90 into 15 into 6 it is also 90 and finally it is 8100 watt and we can say 8.1 kilowatt and a right option matches with 2.
वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम द इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन एन एन टाइप सेमी कॉन्डक्टर इज सेम एज होल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज पी टाइप सो इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज एन टाइप इज इक्वल टू इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन होल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इन पी टाइप एक्सटर्नल फील्ड इज अप्लाइड अक्रॉस इच ऑफ देम कंपेयर द करेंट करेंट इन देम करेंट इन एन टाइप इज इक्वल टू करेंट इन पी टाइप नो 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 बिकॉज यू नो मोबिलिटी ऑफ होल इज लेस देन द मोबिलिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड भी डी इट इज एक्चुअली म्यू E is the electric field. Therefore, we can say V D proportional to mobility of the charge carrier and electric current equal to V D in a electric current through the conductor is I equal to V D in a E is the charge of electron, N is the number density that is the number of free electron, and A is the cross sectional area. So therefore, electric current is proportional to we can say mu. Since the mobility of hole is less than the mobility of electron, so current in the n type and current in p type are not equal. Okay, current in p type is greater than the current in n type, but is not also true. Current in n types greater than the current in p type. Three is the right option here, and no current will flow in p type. Current will only flow in the n type. It is also not true. So one to one to four are incorrect answer, and three is the right option here. Next problem. The problem taken from the simple basic knowledge of semiconductor. Again, the problem taken. We have to match the column. Root means square speed of gas molecules. Root means square speed of gas molecule. It is three R T by m. Three R T by m. So A matches with Q. Okay. Pressure exerted by ideal gas. Pressure exerted by ideal gas. It is one third. Mn C square. So B A match with Q. A matches with Q and B matches with P. Let us check. A R not the correct option. A R not the correct option. So in this way, by checking only one option, we can get the fifty-fifty. Uh, chances the option becomes 50 50 either 2 or 3 next let us check the option b p b matches with p so here b matches with p 3 is the right option here 2 is not the correct option so only by checking 2 you can get the answer in this uh, very easy uh, you don't need to check all the matching but For your better understanding, if we go through the other option, average kinetic energy of molecule, average kinetic energy of molecule, molecule, average kinetic energy of molecule, kinetic energy. I think it is tensorational kinetic energy. Tensorational kinetic energy. It is three by two. K B P. In the case of molecule, you have to use K B. In the case of one mole, then you have to use R. R is the universal gas constant. Okay, so C matches with S. And total internal energy of one mole of an gas of an ideal gas. of an ideal diatomic gas you know d internal energy is equal to degree of freedom into rt since this gas is diatomic 
degree of freedom for diatomic gas you know it is 5 by 2 degree of freedom is 5 this is 5 by 2 into rt and d matches with r okay next problem a spring stretched by 5 cm by a force of 10 newton time period of the oscillations when mass of 2 kg is suspended by it so in the case of spring a body of mass connected across one end and other end of the spring pivoted at the rigid support if this body is straight and slightly depressed we can get the time period of the oscillation is twice pi root over m by k and we need this is to we need the value of k value of mass is 2 kg but the value of k you can find from 5 centimeter 10 newton simple questions f f equal to k x and the value of f is given it is 10 newton and the value of k we have to find out the value of k it is 5 by 100 and value of k is 200 newton per meter so from the stanza one of this problem we have find out found out here the spring constant k 200 newton per meter and if we put here 200 simply this become twice pi by 10 and finally it is 6 0.628 second 2 pi by 10 is equal to 0 0.628 second and right option matches with 4 next problem very simple question <coughs> the velocity of a small ball of mass m in density d when dropped in a container filled with glycerin becomes constant after some time that is terminal velocity okay if the density of the glycerin is d by 2 then the viscous force acting on the acting on the ball acting on the ball will be so in the viscous dragging force it is mg viscous dragging force let us say viscous dragging force it is the buoyancy and viscous dragging force is f this ball will attain a uniform velocity when the forces acting on this body downward and forces acting on this body upward this becomes equal just when becomes equal the body starts moving with some uniform velocity that is with at maximum velocity and this velocity is known as terminal velocity you know so we can write in equilibrium a plus b equal to mg that is weight of the body so the viscous dragging force equal to mg minus b and you know it is mg b by mg we can write it is mg 1 minus b equal to volume of the body density of the liquid into g and this is volume of the body density of the body into g finally mg 1 minus rho l by rho b and it is given in the problem density of the liquid is d by 2 and density of the body is d so very simple it is 1 minus half and finally the answer is mg by 2 and the correct option matches with matches with 1 and the problem taken from you know viscosity and particularly from the terminal velocity okay next problem Question number 26, a body is executing simple harmonic motion with frequency n. So this is very simple question, potential energy 
इक्वल टू हाफ एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर and you know the particle executing shm starting from mean position so we can write x is equal to a sin omega t m omega square s square sin square omega t and it is half m omega square s square 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 and finally it is 1 by 4 m omega square s square 1 minus cos omega prime t actually half half omega square is square half m omega square square is the total energy e total by 2 1 minus cos omega prime t so this is the equation of the uh, potential energy of the particle executing simple harmonic motion here omega prime it is actually 2 omega if we take it is twice pi f prime it is twice pi f so frequency of the potential energy it is equal to 2f f is the frequency of the simple harmonic motion similarly in the case of kinetic energy and potential energy if the frequency of the simple harmonic motion is n so always the frequency of the potential energy and kinetic energy it is two times the frequency of the simple harmonic motion okay so directly you can uh, you can find the answer here without 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 this uh, calculation because i have done this here for your better understanding it is very basic questions asked and right option here is two next problem a nucleus with mass number 240 breaks into two fragments each of mass 120 the binding energy per nucleon of unfragmented nuclei 7.6 mv while the fragment is 8.5 mv with the total gain in the binding energy total gain in the binding energy actually 120 plus 120 into two fragment but the binding energy it is 8.5 similarly the binding energy of the nucleus it is 240 is the 240 is the number of nucleons and the binding energy per nucleon given is 7.6 so into 7.6 so simple questions just you have to calculate this 240 8.5 minus 7.6 and it is 240 into point nine so 90 percent of 240 i think it is four is the correct option here don't calculate this you just apply your simple logic mathematical logic 90 percent of 240 it is to uh, 216 mev so right option matches with four and this problem is uh, taken from or based on the nucleus and uh, atoms and nucleus you know next problem parallel plate capacitor has the uniform electric field in the space between the plates if the distance between the plates d and area f the a the energy stored in the capacitor it is again very simple questions energy density energy density it is actually potential energy per unit volume potential energy per unit volume so potential energy stored in the capacitance it is we can write energy density into v energy density half epsilon 0 is square into a into d a into d is the a is the common plate area and d is the separation so total volume of the capacitor into a into d so this is very simple questions and the right option here is three so energy density in the case of capacitance you know 
energy density in the case of capacitance half epsilon 0 is square so energy stored in the form of electric field in the case of inductor we can we can say the energy density it is b by mu naught b square by mu naught or in the case of elasticity energy density equal to you know half into stress into strain so this is the energy density normally used in our 11-12 syllabus or NCRT syllabus. So it is also very simple question based uh, theoretical based questions just you can find the answer immediately after going through the problem and the option is 3 is the right option here. Next problem. Polar molecules are polar molecules are the molecules having zero dipole moment. This is not true. Acquire dipole moment only in the presence of electric field due to the displacement of charge. 2 is also not the right option. Acquire the dipole moment only when magnetic field is absent. This is not also correct option. Polar molecules actually having a permanent electric dipole moment. 4 is the right option here. It is also very basic questions. You can get in a 3, uh, you can get this uh, uh, conception or this information in any basic text particularly in the NCRT textbook and this is the problem taken from the NCRT textbook. Next problem, next problem a radioactive nucleus it is again taken from atom and nucleus Z Z is the atomic number, A is the mass number. In this reaction, atomic number is decreased by 1. That is, 1 proton converts into atomic number decreases by 1. That is, 1 proton is convert into neutron. So, we can get the beta plus if one proton converts into neutron we can get the beta plus beta plus rage plus neutron particle so because of the beta plus emission the atomic number of the atomic number of the nucleus decreases by 1. So, first 1 is not the correct option, 2 is also not the correct option because alpha is not the emission in the case of first emission in the, in the case of first reaction. Beta plus or beta plus, beta plus, beta plus, okay. Sorry, here I think <coughs> one option is beta minus. Option 3, beta minus alpha, beta plus, beta plus, alpha, beta. So, just, just simple conception. If we apply, uh, if we apply the simple conception, atomic number decreases by 1, that is 1 proton converts into neutron. When 1 proton converts into neutron, the mass number of the nucleus remains same, but uh, we get the, uh, uh, but the atomic number decreases by 1 and we get the beta plus emission, okay. So, right option here is 4, just by checking 1. Let us check the other reaction here for your better understanding, atomic number decreases by 3, that is certainly a alpha particle emission is taken place because due to one atom particle uh, in emission you know the atomic number decreases by 2 so this becomes z minus 3 so beta plus alpha and again c2d c2d atomic number increases by 1 atomic number increases by 1 z minus 3 to z minus 2 that is atomic number increases by 1 so 1 here i think 1 neutron C2D, 
C to D, one neutron converts into proton, we get the beta minus emission and anti neutron of particle. So, if uh, one electron uh, beta particle, beta minus particle is uh, emitted from the nucleus, then we can get we, we can get the atomic number increases by one. So, right option here is four. It is also very simple questions asked taken from nucleus. Consider the following statement A and B identify the correct answer. A Jenner doubt is connected in reverse bias. Generally, we know uh, Jenner doubt is used in breakdown condition, condition when a very high voltage in uh, reverse condition, uh, all the covalent bonds starts uh, uh, breaking down and because of the because of the breaking uh, breaking down of the covalent bonds huge number of uh, uh, huge number of charge carrier available to conduct the electricity and this Jenner doubt can be used as an stabilizer you know so Jenner doubt is connected in reverse bias when using a voltage regulator a is a true statement it is a statement is true okay the potential barrier of pn junction lies between 0 0.3 volt to 0 0.3 0.1 volt to 0.3 volt for germanium knee uh, uh, voltage it is actually 0.3 volt and for silicon knee voltage is 0.7 volt so it is not true it is Point, it is not true that 0.1 volt to 0.3 volt depends on the type of the semiconductor used in the pn junction diode and you can get this basic information from ncrt textbook so here b is not true it is actually it is wrong let us check all the option here a and b both are correct no 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 a and b both are incorrect it is also not uh, correct it is a is correct b is incorrect number three is the right option here and four is not also the correct option so this is also taken from uh, electronics device that is semiconductor and particularly of the Jenner diode and the pn junction diode okay next problem a capacitor of capacitance c is connected across a source voltage v that is variable voltage variable voltage given <coughs> across the condenser a variable voltage given we can get the fluctuation of charge and displacement current displacement current id you know the charge at any instant charge at any instant charge at any instant on the plate is c v and c is the capacitance v given in this problem it equal to v naught sine omega t that is sinusoidal voltage across the condenser if we differentiate both the sides we can get the displacement current this is not conduction current conduction current is passing through the conductor but in the space between two plate we get the displacement current id is equal to c dv dt and finally it is c v naught into omega cos omega t and the right option here is 4 next problem e by z respectively denote energy and gravitational constant then e by z has the dimension of very simple questions based on the dimension but uh, it is uh, you have to think about the uh, dimension is the matter in the examination hall this is uh, appreciably uh, appreciably matter in the examination hall what time taken by you to find the correct option okay 
so if we uh, simply go uh, by this energy by gravitational constant energy means m l square t to the power minus 2 and gravitational constant equal to you know force force means m l t to the power minus 2 into r square that is l square by mass mass square okay so in this way mass square l to the power l to the power minus 1 and t to the power 0 is the dimension of this so m square l to the power minus 1 t to the power 0 1 is the right option here or we can find this we can find the answer of this type of problem by just by applying the units unit of the energy equal to joule and gravitational constants newton into meter square by kg square and you know joule is the joule is the product of newton into meter and this is newton into meter square and it is kg square so simply newton newton cancels each out cancel each other and finally this is m kg dimension of kg m square and dimension of meter it is l inverse 1 and time 0 time uh, t to the power 0 so, so right option here is again it is 1 so you can apply you just you, you just go by the um, using the units of the units of the energy and gravitational constant or by applying the dimension so it is depends on the student choice which one will take the uh, less time to find the answers okay next problem a convex lens a of focal length 20 centimeter concave lens b of focal length 5 centimeter kept along the same axis as the distance d between them convex lens and a concave lens it is also very common questions distance between convex lens and concave lens is d parallel light it will comes out parallelly so light after passing through converging lens it will converge at a point let us say this is the focus of the this is the focus of convex lens and if it is the focus of the diverging lens if the focus of the two lens coincides if the focus of the two lens coincides because of the focus of the uh, if the focus of the two lens coincides so what happened parallel light parallel light entering into the combination of lens and this ray this ray were supposed to meet at the point fc but due to the converging lens so these two these two ray these two ray are supposed to supposed to converge at the point of focus of diverging lens it is diverging lens this is converging lens if the wire converging wire are supposed to meet at the point of focus of diverging lens so rays rays <coughs> rays converging rays supposed to meet at the point of diverging at the focus of the diverging lens so this ray becomes parallel after the after refraction after going through this diverging lens so parallel ray emerge out parallelly 
when their focal length hold on that focus point of the diverging and converging lens coincide each other and this distance is the distance for the converging lens and this distance is the distance for the diverging lens okay this is the diverging lens and this is converging lens so we can say d is equal to fc minus fd so simple question it is 20 minus 5 and finally answer is 15 centimeter so separation between two lenses is 15 centimeter and the right option here is 2 okay this is the problem taken from the ray optics if force if force force is f acceleration a and time t are chosen as the fundamental physical quantities find the dimension of energy so this is again you know in the section uh, a uh, uh, two questions taken from the dimensional analysis okay from the chapter dimensions the very uh, very first chapter of the class 11 you know unit and dimension and uh, uh, actually three questions has been taken from uh, this chapter unit dimensional error measurement so one uh, two questions taken from dimension and one question taken from the measurement of screw gauge here <coughs> simple find the dimension of energy dimension of energy it is m l square t to the power minus 2 this is the dimension of energy dimension of force m l t to the power minus 2 let us say it is x to the power x and dimension of acceleration l dimension of acceleration l t to the power minus 2 to the power y and dimension of uh, t is t to the power z so by just comparing we can say m to the power x l to the power x plus y and t to the power minus 2x minus 2y plus z just by comparing we can get x is equal to 1 all the option given 1 2 3 4 so power of all the all the option given in the power of f is 1 so we can't find the we can't discard any option here by checking x is equal to 1 and you know x plus y is equal to 2 therefore y is also 1 you can discard it 4 only you can discard it 4 only and if we check the power minus 2x minus 2y plus z equal to minus 2 so minus 4 plus z is equal to minus 2 therefore z equal to plus 2 t to the power p square so therefore the right option is 2 so this is this will be the dimension of the energy if we take the force acceleration time as an chosen as an uh, fundamental units okay so this is the question number 35 last questions of the section a so in this way i have discussed 1 to 35 questions i think you are all understood uh, you are all you are all understanding what i have discussed um, and uh, you can find you can check your answer uh, from from my discussion so best wishes for all of you that's all